there are few spiders more feared than the brown recluse. Like a venomous boogeyman lurking in the shadows, their reputation has become larger than life, leading to horror stories about the toxic power this spider possesses. But let's say you do come across a brown recluse. How much danger are you actually in? And do you have what it takes to survive? Let's get up close with one of these frightening arachnids and find out. <clears throat> it's... Oh, there we go. It's a decent sized brown recluse right there. Oh yeah, are you alive? Oh yeah, she's alive, cool. Look at that. You don't see brown recluses out in habitat too often, but uh, we actually flipped quite a few small ones while we've been out here. I was hoping I'd get a nice big one and get her out on some bark here and see how she wants to behave. I know what you're thinking. This guy must be out of his mind taking a deadly brown recluse out of that container. But getting a closer look at the spider can tell us a lot about its behavior. I'm Spencer Hoffman, and I'm searching for the world's weirdest and deadliest creatures. And I've found that the brown recluse is a bit of a wild card. That distinct violin shape made by the hairs on their cephalothorax and their six beady little eyes are more than enough to strike fear into the hearts of many people. But how true are all those horrific stories about this spider? These guys are definitely hiding plenty of secrets, and I'm going to get to the bottom of it. They are recluses for a reason. They like to be tucked away in these dark corners and underneath some of these rocks where there's space underneath, like these cavities under the rock, that's like a perfect spot for a brown recluse to be hiding. These spiders stick to dark, forgotten corners. In habitat, it's under rocks or between the wood and bark of dead trees. Their soft, flat bodies help them slip into crevices that most other arthropods can't reach, enabling them to hide away from the elements. In your house, these spiders love cardboard. The closest material to bark, it's a nice, dry hideaway, where sometimes dozens of these spiders can congregate. In most cases, people live alongside brown recluses every day without ever knowing, and without anyone ever receiving a dangerous bite. But this doesn't mean you can just go around haphazardly sticking your fingers where you can't see them if you live in venom country. There are much more dangerous things than the brown recluse that can be found in this neck of the woods. So always, always better to err on the side of caution. Now, this spider right here is one very, very interesting species. One of my favorites because of just how much controversy there is. One little tiny spider, like look at, look at my finger compared to the size of this spider. One spider smaller than the tip of my finger has so much buzz on the internet. The key to the brown recluse's biology might not be what you think. Look at these eyes on the spider. Six eyes. Most spiders have eight. The recluse spiders belong to a family called Saccharidae, named from the Latin word for assassin. All of them possess a very unique venom from any other spider, a cytotoxin. This is a type of venom that attacks and destroys animal tissue and where the fear of this spider comes. In the tropics, some of the larger saccharids, like the Chilean recluse and the six-eyed sand spider, are known man-killers. But what about the North American brown recluses? The truth is, they have the same exact venom type, but for whatever reason, deaths are extremely unlikely. I'll be investigating their venom more in future videos, but it seems the jury is largely still out on this spider. A better question isn't whether their venom is dangerous, but how likely they are to actually use it. After all, a spider is only as dangerous as it is aggressive. You can see right here, my fingers are just inches from this spider. And actually, if she comes on my hand here, I might actually see if she'll come hang out. Look at that. That is a brown recluse spider on my hand. Now, I've been bitten by quite a few spiders in my lifetime, many of which you've probably seen here on the channel, and some of them were not the most fun experiences. But the thing is, like these spiders, especially brown recluse, you can poke them, you can prod them. You gotta really try to get them to bite you. Zero interest in doing anything. My first ever brown recluse, I was definitely very nervous handling it, but now that I've worked with these kinds of spiders many, many times, their behavior lives up to their name. They are reclusive spiders. They want nothing to do with anything 
other than their food and occasionally other recluse spiders because they have been found living communally here and there. They are very shy, very secretive animals, and the last thing they want to do is bite people because this is much smaller than my thumb. I could literally just go and squish it. In a 1v1 fight, this spider has zero chance against a person. And they know it. They know that we're not food. So wasting venom is kind of pointless. As I've said time and time again, venom is not like some magical substance that these venomous creatures have an unlimited supply of. They can't just say, okay, I'm gonna just bite everything in my path and kill everything in my path. No, look at the size of this spider. You think this has an unlimited supply of venom in it? Absolutely not. Even your biggest, most venomous rattlesnakes can eventually run out of venom if they don't have time to actually replenish it. And it takes time to replenish it. So they're going to be very, very strategic with how they use that precious resource. It's meant for their food. In the wild, where resources are scarce and you never know where your next meal is coming from, it doesn't make sense for these animals to actually just waste their venom. The funny thing about surviving a brown recluse encounter is that if you live in brown recluse habitat, you probably survive them all the time without even knowing. I've worked with some cantankerous and highly defensive spiders. Recluses are not among them. The best thing we can do to survive in recluse country is simply to be careful where we stick our fingers. And remember that as scary as the venom of these spiders is, they're still a key part of the secret world that surrounds us every day. These are tiny spiders. There are a lot of things that would love to eat them. And as predators themselves, there are lots of things that they eat. Our world works because different animals and life forms are constantly moving energy and resources from one part of the food chain to another, and removing a link could have disastrous consequences. Spiders like the brown recluse can be frightening, but they hide many more secrets than we can even imagine. Ever wondered how spider venom worked in the first place? Or why there seems to be so many spiders all over the world? What if I told you that those two things were connected? This video right here breaks down how these arachnids' venomous bites have helped them to absolutely conquer the planet. If you think you're brave enough, I hope to see you there. But until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.